okay. Well, this is what I logged into today. Uh, I'm gonna need a receptionist or something with all these messages. Hey, Etho, I bought some micro blocks. Nine in total for nine diamonds. I didn't take any that you didn't have multiple copies of. Hope this is okay. If not, I can give them back to you. Thank you for your business. Also, I took some wood to make these signs. Thank you for that as well. I also paid one diamond for the signs. It's gal. Huh, okay. Deal. Sure. What do you take? <laughs> I think you took uh, some mob heads. Yeah, yeah. Some of these guys. Okay. No big deal. Uh, Iskel, if you want your novel published, you gotta you gotta work on your capitalizations on those eyes there. I'm just just saying. Uh, we got Monsters Brew new shop opening. Aha! I found it over here. So we're at the shopping district. This is Stress Monsters brand new shop, Monsters Brew, and basically she's doing some market research here. She's asking us to uh, tell her our top three potions we would buy if she opened up a shop. And I would say fire resistance, night vision, underrated potion, very good in my books. I want turtle master, actually. Turtle master. Top three, so. Yes. Sign and close. Okay, so apparently once we give her our research information, uh, there's a chance we can win some free stuff here. Press for reward. <laughs> I like the bell. I gotta get more bells. Bells are awesome. Oh, I heard some some droppers. Reward over here. Oh, we got three blue shiny rocks. Okay, everybody. So to get us started today, I thought I would try clarify something. In the comments of last episode, there was so much confusion. Things are getting out of hand. First off, the pixel arts. Clearly an ocelot. Some people saw a monkey. Okay, I can see that. I can see it as a monkey, but uh, some people thought it was a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, uh, no, you're going too far there. Uh, second thing is uh, the base, right? A lot of confusion about how we're actually building the base, and a lot of that is because we haven't really even got started too much on it. But that is going to be changing here soon. So you'll notice I got all my shocker boxes out because I was going through all the items I've collected so far, and I started crafting them, trying to get at least a stack of every item, and uh, did pretty good at that. Uh, you'll notice we got a bunch of looms, fletching tables, uh, stone cutters, lots of building materials here. Look at this. Oh, once you do this in Minecraft, once you get that in your ender chest, it's so much easier to, to build. It's like you have creative mode. The third thing we need to address, though, real quick here is uh, in the comments, I've noticed a lot of people are convinced that I'm just building this base to troll people. When I am pouring my heart and soul into this, guys, I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. Rest assured, I am a professional Minecrafter. Building is one of my crafts, and I take it very seriously. Okay, so let's get started on building. Today we're going to be building with melons, sea pickles, dried kelp, mushroom blocks, and Azuma's farm fresh honey. That's right everybody, we have a secret building theme today. We're going to be building with food and looms. Now, before we begin building, we must first dismantle the Googler. And I know you guys love the Googler, and we barely knew her, but trust me, it's for the best around. Well, I think that's going to do it for today's episode, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah, I probably can't do that, can I? <laughs> okay, let's get to work here. Aha! So check it out everybody, the Googler has a brand new look, and it's quite a bit different. So let me try to explain the thought process here. We had a bunch of quartz around it originally, and quartz, it's a, it's a decent looking block, right? It usually looks pretty nice, but it's also very simple and plain. It's got a clean look to it, and that's not really what we're trying to do with our base. Also, I'm experimenting a lot with different colors with this base, like I never... 
don't think I've ever done orange and brown like this before and green. Having a white block like quartz doesn't really suit that too well. It doesn't allow for much variation. Uh, we got some lecterns over here. These don't do anything at the moment. I might add some more redstone gizmos later. We also have some daylight sensors up there for variety and it kind of slopes up. One thing I might change here because I feel like we have too much orange maybe is this orange piece up here. I might change that with the dark oak. And uh, we did get our food mixed in with the build here. So check it out. We got the honey, the melons, the kelp, sea pickles, mushroom blocks in the back there with even a few looms. The idea with the, the chaos here, again, is just to add some more color to the build for one thing. So we were able to get some yellow in with the, the honey here, um, more green. Um, we can also use it to transition between colors pretty easily. The other thing, though, is it just fills up space, which is kind of nice. It's supposed to serve as like a background. You're not really supposed to focus on it. So when we're a distance away here, the hope is that like it directs our attention towards the, the Googler and not at it itself. So another thing I did is I put a tree in front of it so that if we are looking that way, there is a little bit of structure there. Um, and that's going to serve as the background color. But uh, because this is a pretty plain structure, having a tree there, again, I think it focuses our attention more on the Googler. The other thing I realized while building this is I need to step quite a ways back to see the whole thing. So we're going to have to have some kind of a path here. Uh, this is good, though. This is how I, I plan my bases. It's like I consider the camera angles mostly. And I know I need to have something that takes me at least as far back. And now I know the entrance is over there. So it's pretty clear. I just put a staircase or something to get from here to there. So I try to find an angle that looks good. And this looks pretty good to me just going up a few blocks here. So we're probably going to want to have some kind of platform over here at some point. Okay, we ended up going for a pretty big change here. We got dark prismarine up there now with a slightly different pattern to it. Uh, got gray terracotta behind it. And on its own, it looked a little bit out of place. So to try blend it in better, I put jungle wood where we had a lot of the spruce wood. So it's a little bit more pinkish now. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. See what you guys say about it. Maybe you have a preference. Uh-oh, I think the base is evolving, guys. It's It's spreading. Getting out of control. Whoa. I don't know what's going on here, but it's not good. <laughs> okay, we go underwater. I think we're underwater right now. Now we're definitely underwater. Alright guys, so I think we're going to escape the monstrosity for a bit. We're going to check out another one of our projects I've been working on here. The tea and tree farm. The tea and tree though. Look at this thing. Look at it. How could you not look at it? It's right in front of us. Oh, it's amazing. So we're going to go for the first test run of it here in a second. And why? Why are we doing the first one together? Because it's a TNT farm. It's going to possibly explode. <laughs> I am so nervous to fire this thing up. It's like a very precisely timed farm. And if I got anything wrong on it, it's going to be bad news bears. Um, so the idea, I don't have it loaded with TNT right now. You fall down the middle. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Wait a second. Try that again. There we go. Yeah, it being on a server might cause some issues. I don't know. Well, we won't know if we don't try, right? So I'm going to load up these dispensers with TNT now. Probably just like eight in each one, just in case things go bad. We got six in total all the way up here. And I didn't quite finish up this area over here, as you can tell. I got to put down a bunch of hoppers for the collection system. But just in case uh, things go sour here, <laughs> we'll do that after. I want to I wanna try out a first run here first. So this farm works best with the spruce trees, I find, and like jungle trees. Um, so we're going to do that first here. The idea is we grow four two by two trees. We go up our water elevator here. To the middle, we got it lined with end stone on the bottom here because that's a little bit more blast resistant. Um, and the TNT gets like as close as possible. Go to the middle, we plow down. Okay, it's going to trigger as soon as we hit the pressure plate here. But we plow down the leaves, hit the pressure plate. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. It should pop right around here. 
Ooh, it's a little higher than it's supposed to be. Is that a problem? Let's find out. I think it was okay. I wonder why it didn't go as far as down as it's supposed to, though. Hmm. Interesting. That wasn't too bad. That was better than I was, I was expecting. I thought it was going to explode. <laughs> so I can't complain with that. Um, and yeah, then we go and we pick up the, the wood. Got at least three stacks from that, I think. So I guess let's do another set of trees here, just to make sure it's actually working. So you just plant a new batch underneath, and trees can grow through any wood if there's any left behind, any leaves above. So it's not like we have to get it all. Uh, it would be nice to, but you can't. <laughs> uh, get that going. We go up our elevator again with our shears. And go down, drop down. So we're taking advantage of the fact that uh, TNT drops all the wood when it explodes on it. While in the past it used to destroy some of it, but now you get all the wood. So it's actually very effective for tree farms. And then we have a little pusher system that's supposed to push any logs up that get left behind. Nothing got exploded up there, that's good. Uh, but for some reason, it's not taking out these ones over here. So maybe I got a timing wrong. These are supposed to be gone here. No! I think I figured it out. I built everything over there a block too low, so I gotta tear it out and redo it. Wait. Block too low. I gotta go up a block. Wait. Oh, that would have been so bad. I, w I lowered it. So I'm supposed to go up. Okay. Good thing I caught that before I... Uh any further. We got it raised up a block. This is our third attempt. Here we go. Uh oh. Okay, I gotta move that water because <laughs> that took a long time to fall through. Oh, that looked good. Yes! Nothing blew up. Nothing blew up. Yeah, and look at this. It's totally clear here now. So it's we can just replant. We don't have to chop anything. Awesome. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Whoa. <laughs> what in the world is this thing? Kangaroo bamboo. We're going to check our shop real quick here. How many diamonds do we have? Oh, we got a few here. Okay, we can get a few more diamond blocks. We got five there. Good, good. A couple more there. So that's three more diamond blocks worth, right? Yeah. Okay. We're going to go for broke, guys. <laughs> this is a horrible idea. We're going to visit Iskel's Treasure Island today and spend all our money. So if you guys don't know, Iskel's Treasure Island here, it says, Pay one diamond block to mine a gem. Those are the gems over there, the shulker boxes. Some gems have treasures and some don't. Most don't. <laughs> it's kind of a scam. Important, do not open a gem before mining it. So we can't check what's inside before we mine it. You get, you get to keep the gem and its contents. Good luck. So we, we can get jackpot, diamonds, elytra, super gear, stone, redstone, wood, rarities inside. I don't really care about any of that stuff. What I'm really trying to get is a golden ticket. I'm hoping there's still some left in there. Uh, I'm going to go for broke here until I get one. So, uh, let's take a blue one here. The golden ticket allows us access to Iskel's pigmen farm in the nether. Ah, we got wood. Okay, okay. I'm going to leave them here. I'm not going to take the stuff out. Uh, just, yeah, I'm going to just keep going here. So... <laughs> Yeah, I, I realized, like, I was thinking about it, is like, I'm not, not actually going to build the zombie pigment farm uh, with the nether resetting, right? And I want to have a bunch of gold on hand when the pigmen trading, piglin trading comes out. Let's go for the blue one. I like the blue shulkers. So I got to get a bunch of gold, and the only way to do that is to use someone else's farm. Empty. We're going to go for cub fan strategy on this one. The, the cream of the crop rises to the top, right? Okay, okay, we're not doing too good here. <laughs> it's got to be this one. <laughs> Darn it. Mm, I'm going to go for this one. If it's not this one, I'm taking the green one next. Ah! <laughs> I don't care if I spend all my diamonds. I just want a golden ticket. Please tell me I'm going to get one at the end of this. 
okay. Okay, come on. Come on. Gold. Oh. That got me excited. It's kind of what I'm looking for, but not exactly. I need to bu make a bunch of power rails for that uh, ice farm as well. Glass. Okay. Okay. This isn't going quite like I had hoped. So I was hoping I would get it within three. <laughs> I don't know how many are actually in this pile. Oh, it's empty. Okay. Okay. Come on. Come on. I'm running out of diamonds here. No. <laughs> no. Give me the crop rises at the top. Going for it again. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Cub, it's not working. Yellow for gold. Gotta believe. <laughs> Down to three. <laughs> this isn't working like I had planned. I thought he would have had like quite a few golden tickets in there, but no, oh, it's not looking good. I think I got like one more diamond block I can rustle up. Oh, it's empty. Let's see here. Yeah, I, I don't quite have a full one in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. Final one. Redstone. Ah. <sighs> it can't buy you what you really want in life. Shooting stars break the mold. All right, everybody, so we are back at the monstrosity again here. Things seem to have calmed down. It's not going crazy anymore. And I think to finish off this episode, we're going to do something to cheer my cheer me up here. <laughs> now that I'm flat broke, we're going to do a redstone project I've been wanting to do for a few days here. I've been uh, working at designing it. I think I got it uh, not perfect, but... It's hard to get things perfect with redstone. You usually have to just accept, okay, that's as good as it's going to get. Um, or else it's going to have to get bigger or less efficient in other ways. And uh, I'm happy with what I got here now, finally. So we talked about this a while ago. We were going to add some sort of storage system for the enchanted books we're getting from our enchanting room here. The problem is, enchanted books are non-stackable items, so it's kind of hard to make a storage system for them. But I got a plan in mind here. We're going to have a couple things. Um, okay. I'm trying to make like something pretty cool here. So the idea is I want to have a menu. So we're going to use the lectern as our menu. Basically, we'll have a book in there. So the cool thing about lecterns is they output a comparator signal based on what page you are. So I got a 15 page book here. And if you do that, then every time you flip a page, the signal strength changes. So now it's at two on page three. It's three on page four. It's four and so on and so forth up to up to 15. So simply put, we use the lectern to choose what item we are either storing or taking out based on what page we're on. Then uh, we hit the button if we want to retrieve an item, and then that's going to go through a water stream and get delivered at our feet here at the trap door. Uh, if we want to store an item, we put it in the dropper, and it's going to go into the right space. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, at most, we can store, I think, 16 items with this. So we're going to need several lectern setups like this, actually, because I did a... I checked it out. I think there's going to be 38 enchantments, like different ones in the game, uh, counting soul speed, which, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's quite a bit. Like 16 for each of these things means we need at least three of them. Uh, so I'm going to be building at least three of them. Probably just one today, though. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be the final look for it, but something similar to this, probably. we got to build up the walls with something here as well. I like having the bookshelves there. I think that's cool. Adds a bit of color to it. We got the looms, of course. The empty bookcases. <laughs> uh huh. Looms are amazing, guys. You can use them for anything. Uh, we got panda problems. I don't know what's up with the pandas. Sometimes they just hunt me down. The evil ones. These are the evil ones. Oh boy, don't get me started on the goose dock. Don't get me started. Oh, you got me started. Okay, so it's springtime, guys. It's springtime right now in Canada land. And the geese are back. Oh, they're back. 
I had bad morning voice today. You know why? You know why I had bad morning voice? Because the geese are back. They woke me up two hours earlier than I was ready to get up. They were outside my window honking. The honking just wouldn't stop. Oh. It was rough. It was rough. I survived, but I'm really tired now. <laughs> All day I've been just exhausted because of those stupid geese. Ah. I tried to fall asleep, but they just wouldn't stop. Anyways, okay, so I got this kind of set up. Let's try it out here. The idea is we should be able to store non-stackable items in this. And we I got it set up so I can load them lots at a time here. Hopefully. So those should be going into the number four slot. And if we press a button, we should get one. This is our first time testing it, by the way. Uh, yeah, we got it back. Okay, good, good. Um, if we go to number five, we should get nothing because there's nothing in the system. Heard a click and nothing. If we go to three, again, we should get nothing. Or any of the other ones, just four. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the tricky part here. I got to somehow explain this now. <laughs> Uh, while well, being tired as well. Uh, so same kind of issue I had with the Googler. It's a more complicated project and I was trying to go step by step showing you guys how to build this thing, but then it, it was just too difficult and I did, I did it all off camera. We're going to try go through it though and I'll do my best to explain it. Uh, and hopefully we'll see all the redstone if you want to recreate it. You can freeze the video and, and uh, check it out. So I think first off here, let's just take a look at it from a few different angles to give you an idea of what we're dealing with. I only installed the first eight uh, storage things for it, not the full 16. So it's only half built too, by the way. Um, okay, so you can see we got some droppers down here. Those swords we just put in should be in there. That, that's the fourth dropper. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way down. Um, so that's where our swords ended up in here. Those droppers are facing down at the water stream, and then uh, if they shoot in the water stream, it goes over here and up the elevator to us. Um, we funnel the swords in from up above here on these hoppers. Yeah, so check this out. Our lectern is still on page number four. That's where the swords ended up in the fourth slot. Um, that lectern is right behind this block over here, and we use a comparator to check the signal strength, what page it's on, and that goes over here. And then the further along that goes, locks more of these hoppers, okay? And if we put an item in the dropper, it goes along, and then since these first three were locked, it ends up going in the fourth one here, and down into the dropper below with the other swords. Um, and if we, whoop, if we change that, if we go further, voice crack. <laughs> Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. It goes all the way up to here. So now it's going to end up in the one that's unpowered over here. This comparator also branches down to these ones over here. And when this piston puts the block down, it lets the signal through here. And then it goes to all this wire, these repeaters. You might recognize this if you're a little more familiar with redstone. This is a commonly used selector system for comparator strength stuff. So we got a bunch of repeaters facing into redstone torches and depending on the strength of the redstone, it lights up the redstone torch up there accordingly and only one torch. Um, so if it's on four, it'll light up the fourth torch, five, the fifth torch and so on and so forth. When those turn on, when they pulse on, they power the dropper diagonal and that's how it shoots the item out to be delivered to us. Now, when I was making the system, I realized it actually has a pretty major problem to overcome because what happens, what happens, guys, if those double chests fill up of items and then these hoppers start filling up of items? I put over uh, 60 swords in here, by the way, now. <laughs> so it's like, uh, it's out of space. We still got a little space left in this hopper, but when this one fills up, guess what? Even though this is unpowered, the items from our water stream aren't going to go into there anymore. There's no more space. They're going to go into that one. And uh, the system's going to overflow into the wrong hopper and our items are going to get all mixed up. Okay, so we got a bunch of comparators over here. 
on these hoppers. So when this one fills up, the comparator turns on, it powers this line of redstone, unpowers this torch over here, and that redstone. We gotta do a bit of parkour here. Go over here. And that allows, this is an old school clock, it just, it just pulses every so often. That allows that to run, and then it sends a signal to this repeater every, like, second or so. And then that goes to... <laughs> It, it's a much like pressing the button over here. It'll trigger this set of stuff. It goes to this repeater uh, and uh, triggers this stuff. Shoots out an item. So if it's full of items, it shoots one out and frees up space in the system so it doesn't overflow. Um, so we can try that out here. Let's put one more sword into the system. And now, there, now there's not going to be enough space for it. So it'll give us one back. Or two, I think, actually. Yeah, two. That's another issue. <laughs> I did actually figure out how to fix that, so it only gives us one item when it overflows instead of two like that. We have to add another repeater set at four to this clock. But that creates another problem that's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> so this is like the lesser of two evils, basically. So we have another thing we had to work out here. Like, when an item goes into those hoppers, it would trigger this redstone line, right? Unless we did something kind of special there. Uh, we're taking advantage of the way hoppers work. So if you have two hoppers, if this one's pulling out of this one, and an item goes into this one, a comparator won't detect that. So when only one item goes in, we don't want to detect it. But if it overflows, then we want the comparator to turn on. So that's that's how we're doing that trick. If the, this was a chest, for example, below, then it would trigger every time. You see that? We don't want that. So that's why we have the two sets of hoppers. Even with this hopper trick, though, there's another problem that comes up with it. What happens if the items enter too quickly? You see that? It turns on still. If it gets backed up, um, it can turn on when we don't want it to, and that'll trigger it to shoot items out, even though it's not overflowing. So like when we're putting the swords in here, for example, if we shoot those into the system too quickly, you see we got it on a slow clock here. If it's too quick, it'll back up and then trigger when we don't want it to. So we actually have a very slow clock for this dropper. Um, this is the comparator that checks if there's any items inside. If there is, it runs on an old school slow clock like this. Back to over here. Uh, and likewise, that's why we have the slow clock over here. We want something slower than the speed of hoppers so that they're guaranteed to be clear by the time the next item comes in. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, anyways, hopefully that made sense. I think I explained everything I wanted to there. I will say, if you are trying to make this yourself, going by what you saw there, keep in mind we got a hidden piece of redstone there that you didn't see. <laughs> and it just goes through here to the other side like that. And yeah, I think that's everything. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye. This is the real end, by the way.